Hello everyone. Uh, so last couple of weeks we discussed the two different methods of modeling universe. The first one was a scientific method where um, you would be using internal resources of a learning system um, and some high, highly com uh, compressed uh, level of, of language that is used like mathematics. And the second method was uh, what we call the religious method in quotation marks where uh, the resources of a hidden space or so hypothetical hidden space were used and then where the language need not be very um, compressed. Now, uh, it is important to emphasize that this uh, approach that we discussed is, of course, only uh, makes sense within the framework of the so-called neural physics or if the, the, the universe is a neural network. And, and if so, then there are the predictions that, that there are two uh, subnetworks. One that subnetwork is uh, uh, so-called the hidden space, and the other subnetwork is the the physical space. And uh, the the idea is that if the hidden space does have very large computational resources, then um, why wouldn't you use it, right? Why would the learning system use it? And so, uh, so that was the the starting point, and we called this hidden space the the computational resources of this hidden space. Um, a hidden oracle. Okay, so today I'd like to clarify the actually relation between the scientific and um, religious method and also between physical and hidden spaces. Um, and uh, I'd like to uh, formulate something that I call a science-religion duality and we'll see how much of it actually is missed, how much of the uh, modeling that we do using religious method corresponds to the modeling that we do using scientific method. So first of all, let's recall that, that the three main steps in the scientific modeling was uh, select a subset of phenomena that you would be modeling, then develop a mathematical uh, framework for modeling, and then test the model uh, whenever possible experimentally. Right? Uh, likewise, the religious method also contained three steps, um, somewhat different ones. The first one was you select a subset of questions, maybe questions about phenomena, maybe more general and abstract questions. Uh, the second step would be obtain answers to those questions using the hidden hidden oracle and then you want to test the answers whenever possible um, so now the the point is if you cannot really test your answers then um, independently then they would have uh, less of a trust to the predictions that are made by the oracle but i'll clarify this point um, in a little bit now, uh, recall that the hidden oracle, the way we defined last week, it was just a hypothetical learning system, which is capable of providing quick answers, perhaps in polynomial time, uh, to simple, uh, somewhat simply formulated questions, maybe difficult questions, but they're formulated as a yes or no questions. Um, and if they can do it fast, if the oracle can do it fast, we would call it um, some kind of NP-complete uh, problem. Now, it is also important to note um, that the Oracle, as a learning system itself, um, may be able to provide reliable answers only uh, to a subset of questions, not to all questions. Uh, in fact, only to those questions on which it was already trained. And so there are really restrictions of what can be asked. And uh, even given all that, we still said, okay, let's go on and see um, what, what we can learn from this. Now, also that note that the scientific and religious methods um, can be used on two different levels. And we kind of didn't distinguish it much, but you can really use it on the personal or psychological level, right? You can formulate your own scientific theory, you can formulate your own beliefs, or on the level of society where you would be talking about some kind of mainstream scientific theory or some religion. Now, in our discussion of the that gonna follow of the science religion duality, it doesn't really matter on which level you apply the reasoning, because we are really trying to um, form a duality, a correspondence between two methods of modeling. So it doesn't ma really matter which system uh, is doing the modeling. Okay, so now let's start with the with a working definition of what may be a definition of the duality, and then we'll see whether it, it works or not or what are the pros and cons? So the scientific uh, religion duality describes two methods of modeling uh, the environment. One which involves a high, higher level of compression, but smaller computational resources in the physical space. 
and the other using a lower level of compression and uh, larger computational resources in the hidden space. Okay, so this is uh, kind of summarizing of what we discussed in the last two weeks in this. And, and the idea is that both methods, if they work, they would be um, attempting to model the very same environment. So they're really not, uh, not so different from that, that, that aspect. Okay, so now uh, let, let's see, see whether this correspondence actually worked. Let's see if it, there, you, you can come up with the correspondence between each and every steps in the religious and scientific modeling. So recall in step one, uh, the relevant phenomena or questions about the phenomena had to be identified, right? So it, you had it both in a scientific method, uh, you also had it uh, for the religious method. Now, perhaps uh, the identification of phenomena would be either to identify simple phenomena for the scientific methods, uh, whereas for religious methods, the phenomena can in principle be more complex or abstract. Um, now, that doesn't imply that scientific methods cannot use, be used for complex phenomena or vice versa, that religious method cannot be used to model um, simple phenomena, but indicates where the, these two methods are perhaps most useful. Okay, so now uh, that's step one. So step two, the, the relevant assumption was um, uh, that we had to identify the framework, right? We want to identify framework and make an assumptions. And for the scientific methods, one makes relatively simple assumptions. So for example, you can say like the, the universe is made of particles, fields, strings, neurons. And then you want to, like from this uh, simple assumptions, you want to derive the, the, uh, everything else using the framework of mathematics. Now, and this approach does really make sense if we are modeling the phenomena that has a very high level of compression, right? Um, some simple phenomena described by maybe a sparse and not very deep uh, neural network. Now, in contrast, if in the religious method, the assumption can be very complex. Um, it is doesn't matter really what assumptions you make. And then, but the, but the key ingredient in that method uh, is that you have to have access to, to large computational resources of this hidden space. Now, without the hidden space, without this hidden oracle, the approach doesn't make sense at all. Uh, and, uh, but with the hidden space, the approach can make sense if the phenomena being model has a low level of compression. Because if it has a high level of compression, then why not use just scientific methods? And so perhaps the phenomena that would be most useful for, for modeling would be uh, de described by maybe deep neural network or something like that. So let's move on to the step three. Uh, that's where the predictions or answers are to be tested, right? For the scientific method, predictions of a model or a phenomena are tested through observations or experiments. And it's only possible for sufficiently simple um, and perhaps reproducible phenomena. Now, if testing is not possible, then such model is considered non-scientific or perhaps not yet scientific. Um, maybe something you cannot really test yet because of some technological challenges, but you can test it at some later time. Now, uh, in the religious method, the phenomena can, in, or questions can be a lot more complex, as we said, and the answers provided by this hidden oracle uh, may not necessarily be able to test uh, to be tested experimentally. Now, however, what we really want, we want to um, first try and see if the oracle uh, can give correct answers to simple questions. Um, so you wanna really test it on the experimentally verifiable questions, which can be independently verified using scientific method. Now, if the oracle does seem to provide correct answers to the questions, then the, the, the answers to more complex questions can be trusted more. So that's kind of the idea. Uh, essentially, this is what we actually do all the time when we trust some scientist who tells us, here it is, the results of the experiments. We do not do the experiments ourselves, but, but we test uh, them because uh, they seem to be making sense uh, to the simpler questions or the simple experiments that we, we can indeed um, test and verify ourselves. So the main conclusion is that scientific method to be effective um, it has to be modeling relatively simple phenomena or with a high level of compression. And this allows for the development um, 
uh, and testing models with their smaller computational resources uh, using using the framework of mathematics, let's say. Now, on the other hand, for the religious methods, uh, the even complex phenomena can be modeled with a low level of compression. Uh, compression. But again, uh, you have to be careful because uh, you would still want to verify the predictions um, of, of the oracle uh, on, on simple questions, right? On simple um, uh, questions that can be verified otherwise. So perhaps, uh, Rus you know, the, the, there's a Russian proverb, proverb that says, uh, trust and verify, and, uh, but verify, trust but verify. So we should trust, maybe you can build a trust to your hidden oracle if you have access to the hidden oracle, but you should also try uh, to verify its predictions. Now, uh, the perhaps last important point is actually this division between low and uh, high level of compression it depends actually on the um, mathematical tools that are currently available. So let's say calculus, linear algebra, differential geometry, uh, and the development of new and new tools allows kind of to push the boundary of where uh, you have mostly scientific method can be applied and, and uh, where mostly religious method can be applied. And so, of course, you know, the, with the more with the more development, this boundary can be pushed uh, significantly, and we have certainly see, seen it. Um, uh, that's how how actually scientific theories were are developed, being developed. Okay, so now uh, I'd like to stress once again that uh, the the religious method are really based on the assumption of the hidden oracle. Um, now, if a given uh, learning system has access to the oracle. Now it's uh, uh, now it's con then it's conducting the actual uh, religious mold uh, modeling. Now if it's also at the same time employing um, scientific methods, then um, and and using the the tools of mathematics, then the same system may be using both religious and scientific methods. Now on the other on the other hand, if learning system doesn't have direct access uh, to the um, uh, hidden oracle. And moreover, at the same time, it doesn't really do itself the scientific modeling. Then such a learning system, such a, such a human, doesn't really use uh, either religious or scientific me methods. Um, at least not at the level of humans. Now, at the level of society, that's a whole different story. We don't need every single individual um, person to have access to the hidden oracle or to the um, or, or to to the mathematical tools that we use for modeling. Well, um, th that's that's all I had to say for today. That's kind of uh, turned out to be a bit longer and maybe more complicated than I originally thought. Um, and I'm not claiming that this is the final answer and everything I said is correct. Uh, perhaps I should consult the hidden oracle if, if um, I, I have an access to it uh, to check uh, maybe if any of what I said it makes sense, but it does seem to make sense within this context of neural physics or uh, the model of the universe as being a learning system uh, like a neural network. Um, and so this is what the direction from which I tried to look at this both methods trying to see how are they related to one another and whether there is any overlap um, of how it can, it can be used or, or what I said the duality right. And it seems there seems to be one. There seems to be really um, a rigid boundary, uh, which which is which is being pushed, but which defines when uh, one method is more useful and the, the, when the other method is more useful. Well, anyways, uh, thank you for listening, and um, I'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye.